there are still some regulars missing, but we will see. So, hi everyone, welcome to this um, seminar today. I will just very um, briefly tell you a bit about Nelat. So, you know, altogether um, how how he fits in so nicely into our um, weekly Tsa seminar. Um, Nenad is the coordinator and manager of the Berlin Center of Transnational Border Studies, which is called Border Crossings, Crossing Borders. And he will tell us something about the magic of maps today. And I thought, because, you know, last week we heard this great talk by Milica Popovic on Yugoslav Nostalgia. And two weeks ago, um, the Rijeka and Flux team with Brigitte Lenormand and um, John Corbett. Um, already talked amongst many other things about maps and their role in shaping our perception of the world and the everyday. Um, and I believe that Nenad's talk today very nicely fits into this series of, of, of very yeah, stimulating and, and intriguing presentations and discussions about Southeastern Europe. And what might be more interesting to some of us even is about current approaches um, in researching Southeastern Europe and, and you know, in, in this um, kind of, well, let's say, area of studies. So welcome, Nenad, first of all. And I will just, you know, before I let you start talking, I would very briefly just say a few words about your research background and projects. And I prepared for that, so I, you know, not to forget the most um, important things here. So after studying East European history in Frankfurt, Nenad wrote his PhD about the history of SANU, the Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts, um, in the period of socialist Yugoslavia, and published this research in a book with a very nice title, Wissenschaft als nationaler Beruf, which could be translated into science as a national profession. And for this PhD, he received funding from the Heinrich Böll Stiftung, which also is a great address if you want to work more progressively altogether, I would say, as it is the political foundation associated with the Green Party in Germany, as you might know, but in case you didn't, now you know. <laughs> um, and after his PhD, Nenad worked at the Berlin Seminar for Comparative History, later also in the Competence Network for Phantom Borders in Eastern Europe, where he specialized on Southeast European border regimes. And this focus in his research on border matters has lasted throughout all his more recent projects and positions, as far as I can see, of course, and, and from what I hear. And among these positions, for example, also was an interim professorship in East and Southeast European history in Leipzig, but about Above all, um, it is of course his work in the Berlin Border Center or the Border, border Studies Center, um, where this focus is really, um, really working. So, um, Nenad also has a lot of publications which you might want to look up at his um, homepage at Humboldt University. And I would say just you know, without too much further ado, I would like him to um, start his talk, The Magic of Maps about the Visualization of Ethnicization of Society. So, Nenad, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Roswitha, and thank you uh, for this nice introduction. Also, I mean, inviting me to Rijeka. It's really a pity uh, um, at the moment, uh, but um, to get an impression, I just looked up maps on Google to see actually where I could be um, uh, virtually, so to say. And um, I, will, I will just present something um, connected to my, my research on um, um, uh, borders in the Balkans of inventing borders and um, uh, this is part uh, of this former work in this phantom border uh, uh, project. And um, uh, I think I'm elaborating now also concerning a publication. Uh, actually, I have also a presentation. Um, I will see if this is uh, possible to share. I think it is possible to share. So I just have to um, look if I can make it 
so that you can see it. Um, so, okay, I think it is working. Well, I mean, um, um, as, as, you, as you all know, since uh, the end of the 19th century, most people, not only uh, particularly in uh, Southeastern Europe, have, have encountered state borders and the visual dimension, initially at school, uh, on the obligatory national map next to the blackboard. Um, and in most cases, um, only the, uh, the clearly defined uh, territory of the own uh, state is visible um, on the maps. And um, uh, this uh, visualization of borders, especially the process of their internalization, uh, was and is an important prerequisite uh, for seeing borders as something self-evident, yeah? but, but also as natural mm, kind of uh, borders. The map uh, suggests belong to the landscape like city, countryside, river, so borders. Mm, the, in, the interest in maps from a historiographical um, uh, perspective has, as you may know, has grown in the recent years and it lasts two decades. Um, and for example, our colleague here from Humboldt University, Jörg Dünne, summarizes uh, the relevance of maps um, in a network of political power and uh, scientific knowledge in this form, I, I quote it. Mm. Quote, the development of a territorial conception of speciality in the early modern era is thus to be understood as a correlate of a certain media practice that operationalizes space by means of maps in a double way. On the one hand, as a measurable space of power, but also as an iconic or symbolically coded space of knowledge and imagination. Um, and what is important here is the elaboration of these uh, um, two dimensions, uh, end of quote, namely the techniques of power and the practices of knowledge, so to say. And the historian uh, Ulrike Jureit highlights what is also very important for me, the reality effect, she calls it, the reality effect of maps. Mm, maps seem to be suitable to prove the power force of discourses um, as it can be demonstrated how the social landscape is shaped by the power of maps. Quote, a central step, step in the creation of political spaces and the, is the retranslation and thus the demarcation of the borders previously uh, fixed up on, fixed on the map. In the procedure of spatial fixation, the map then no longer serves merely as a storage medium, but becomes itself a significant component of the spatial constitution. This reality effect reveals beyond the complex representational capacity of maps, their constructing potential, which is still constitutive for the production and order of political spaces today. Um, to discuss, to discuss this, um, to discuss this uh, uh, relationship, this reality effect, I will look now on three kind of maps: topographical maps, historical maps, and and ethno ethnographical maps. Uh, and first of all, topographical maps are fundamentally linked to a new access uh, to state power and a part of the process of creating bounded space as Charles S. Meyer has, has called it. Um, topographical maps in, in the central Balkans, which is my research area, were enterprises, of course, of the end empires in the 19th century. Mm. In the area of the uh, later Bulgarian state, Russian military cartographers were the first to under, under, undertake some screenings um, in 1828 and 29 uh, and, and during the war with the Ottoman Empire. And they were based on astronomical observation as well as following rivers and, and important roads. Again, after the Crimean War, 
Russian officials uh, with the allowance of the Ottoman Empire searched between 1867 and 1869 within this area suitable points for a future triangulation. And in the subsequent years, also the Habsburg, or better to say for this period, the dual monarchy, sent their officers to screen routes in the Balkans between 1878 and 1877, before this famous and crucial Berlin uh, Congress of Berlin. And this, the results of these uh, Habsburg expeditions become part of the very famous Generalkarte general map from Central Europa of Central Europe. And this map also served partly um, as a basis for the decisions on the Berlin Congress in 1878. And topographic maps um, already at this time had the appearance of a comprehensive geographical accuracy. But also in the Balkans, as for example, for the almost simultaneous debate over the limitation of colonial claims in Africa, it became apparent that the vagueness of such maps led to numerous, numerous misunderstandings. Mm. And this led uh, to a very vivid contradiction between the literally cartographic projection of domination and a local reality that was completely different from it. Whereby the, as Ulrike Juleit called the space constituting potential of the maps should not be thought of as a smooth process, but rather as a contradictory interaction between different social actors. And there were also fascinating interactions between power and society, um, the various actors involved in the processes of border demarcation from the international commissions that determined the course of the border on the spot to the regional actors of the new nation states and the local population and all in one moment and in one place. And I want to, to show now an exemplary constellation of, of such, uh, such uh, uh, conflicts um, from my research on the demarcation between the new Principality of Bulgaria um, and the now sovereign principality and later Kingdom of Serbia in the area of the Balkan mount mountains, Stara Planina. It's called, you see it here on a modern map, the, the, the borderline is slightly uh, different now from uh, that one in 1878. Mm, but this, it, it is just about this, this part here. Um, as you see, it's close to Sofia, to the uh, capital of Bulgaria, and it is also on the uh, old Via Militaris route passing here, this, this, this area. You here see a later topographical map from the Serbian military and uh, fo focusing here on the region. Unfortunately, it's too small, so, but I just wanted to illustrate, you will, you will see. So, um, um, there a peculiar momentum of its kind developed when the decisions of the Congress of Berlin uh, of 1878 on the demarcation of the borders were to be implemented. And the commission, um, consisting about over 50 people, so from France, Germany, England, Italy, and Russia, as well as one representative of Serbia and including also what was interesting for me, but particularly a mobile kitchen, um, try to identify the single, single points uh, of the new border in the landscape, which were fixed on such uh, topographical maps here. You see the black line, it's not the red line, it's the black line here. Um, but, at a very special point where the new borderline was to change, as you see it here, um, where the new borderline was to change its direction significant, significantly, uh, leading on the ridge uh, of the Balkan mount, mount, mountain, um, and which was marked, marked at, on a map as Radocina, the commission simply couldn't find, uh, find it. Uh, and the local uh, inhabitants consulted by the members of the commission uh, had never heard such a name, Radocina. Mm. And in the commission, 
uh, there, where there was already a lot of disagreement between the Serbian official and the Russian officer. Uh, the Russian officer represented Bulgaria, which is a state was only in the process of being established. Um, the dispute came to a head as to whether this Radocina was located further uh, in the west, so here in the west or somewhere in the east or wherever actually. So, and in the course of the day long search for Radocina, the inhabitants of um, this uh, two villages, uh, Slavinia and Senokos, as you see here on, uh, on the projected border, um, uh, they realized that here was a possibility for them um, uh, to, to, to take initiative themselves as they had learned, the border was threatening to run through the middle um, of the villages and make their forests and pastures inaccessible. Thereupon, they, uh, they, they, they turned to the commission and said they now knew exactly uh, where this uh, Radocina was located and they would take them uh, there. And the commission was surprised that this point was so far in the West um, uh, that the, the both villages and the districts were now completely on the one side of, of the border. And the fact that peasants defined the borders could not be right um, in the eyes of the commission. So however, they stuck to what they called um, their scientific method and agreed to the Italian uh, proposal to define the point of the border by means of triangulation between two alternative radocinas and to say this one should be then in the middle. So then uh, this, this kind of decision um, uh, realized then the phantom Radocina to a real point. But this Radocina didn't actually exist and it doesn't, does not exist until today. And, um, but what is for me very interesting here or for was interesting here is this constellation between the three levels uh, that can be uh, seen here, the international powers, um, whose representatives are to draw the border, as well as the representative of the regional power, the Serbian state, and finally the local population, which is affected by the drawing of, drawing of the border, but does not remain a passive object, but rather takes the initiative. And we also see how, um, how contested this reality effect um, of such ma maps often was. So, this as a small insight in, in the relation between topographical maps and their re reality effect and this, this interaction between these several layers of power. Um, I come now shortly, very shortly, to historical maps. Um, as we can see, historical maps are still very popular. Um, they are showing, firstly, the territorial expansion of states since the 19th century. Or secondly, they are extent in idealized pasts, which at the same time include completely different areas that are not part of the current state territory, as you maybe know. And um, the tradition of projecting the 19th century nation state territoriality back into distant pasts was um, at the same time very present overall in Europe. Um, and historical maps, therefore, uh, as you might, might see, may see it here on the Bulgarian example, um, they, they give the impression that the state is a pulsating, constantly expanding organism. This is an example from a set of maps which were published in, uh, uh, in Germany during the first um, um, uh, World War uh, by Bulgarian authorities to see, uh, to, 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 to document all the areas which were at one time part of the Bulgarian empire starting in the uh, sixth uh, cent century uh, um, and uh, until now. So you see uh, this, this Bulgaria is constantly growing, changing, contracting, uh, expanding. It's, it really has something uh, of an, of an organi organism and um, you see it also, yeah. Um, it gets also, um, I will come to this now, uh, an importance uh, beyond uh, scientific uh, uh, discussion. And what here is also um, very important is that here 
we can see a contradiction in national discourse, for example, also in Serbia, borders are conceived on the one hand as a solid and stable barrier that protect the national body, as we see it here uh, in some way. But at the same time, they are always expandable. It is, this means they are revisable, depending on whether historical or ethnic criteria um, are used as a basis. So um, history do does not show uh, unambiguity, but it shows all the possibility that can be employed to um, uh, have a legitimation or, 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 or claim territory, territories for, for a nation state. Um, and uh, there in uh, Bulgaria, another variant can be also um, observed. Um, there a border is celebrated that never existed in uh, reality, um, but only as a draft at the Russian Ottoman Peace Conference um, uh, before the Berlin Congress in 1878 in San Stefano. Um, which then led to, to, to disputes uh, among the great powers and lastly then to the Berlin Congress. Um, and this uh, uh, San Stefano Bulgaria uh, is nevertheless a, a central symbol of uh, the national imaginarium of Bulgaria and you can, you can really encounter it everywhere. Also at Super Igrashki, um, you can buy uh, 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 um, Obrazovatelna uh, Igra, Velika Bulgaria. And you can uh, also see here, it stretches far to the Adriatic. This is the idea of having a Bulgaria of the three, um, three seas, the Black Sea, the White Sea, as, it's called, as it is called in Bulgaria, and the Blue Sea, uh, the Adriatic one. And um, so um, this, this San Stefano Bulgaria, as you saw it on, also on the T-shirt, is really, is really a part of, of everyday life. And it's very, very um, internalized. Uh, 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 in public, in the public sphere. So now I'm coming to the third point. I mean, um, talking about ethnographic um, maps. Um, ethnographic maps paradoxically appear as um, the most accessible way in representing space and place connected with imagination of, of societal order. Um, they um, initially served as a blueprint in the Balkans also for future state borders. And Henry Wilkinson, a geographer, uh, one of the first uh, who analyzed this phenomenon um, of competing territorial claims in the region of Macedonia, um, in 1952, he did this um, a long time ago. Um, he speaks, um, um, and I lent my title of the presentation from him, um, he speaks of the subtle emotional appeal which emanated from ethnographic maps. He spoke of the magic of such maps in the simple flat colors where to be seen the hopes and aspirations of a nation, end of quote, of Henry Wilkinson. So uh, we see uh, that Henry Wilkinson is a really polite person uh, speaking um, uh, this way. We can, could also formulate this in a, another way. I will try to do this later. Um, and such, again, such maps were to be first produced and introduced within imperial context, mostly in the Habsburg Empire. Ami Bouye, Le Turquie d'Europe, um, was the first one to, to undertake this. Then in Germany also Kiepert um, with his maps and uh, Schafarik also um, language maps also in the context of the Habsburg um, Empire. And politicians and learned people from the Balkans adopted easily such a perception and language of space in, I would call this monochrome colors. And in the following decades until the Balkan Wars, such maps rapidly evolved into the blueprints as uh, Wilkinson called it, of the future of the Balkan society. But this blue, blueprint meant that the confusing for, for such mindsets, the confusing multidimensionality of Ottoman or post-Ottoman society concerning religion, nation, and citizenship, the ambiguity of societal spaces be, being nationally unambiguous had to be replaced by monochrome color stretching over homogeneous territories. 
and drawing uh, such maps, and by this uh, referring to, again, to Ulrike Jureit, ordering the political space was also part of the um, work of the first generation of renowned um, geographers from the turn to the 20th century, as I will shortly, very shortly mention here, uh, Jovan Zwiet. So, um, Jovan Zwiet, you see him here in his research area on um, his research vehicle. Um, I mean, the, 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 the picture is very, very instructive. So, there is uh, a hierarchy, of, although the, uh, um, um, the horse is really a small one, um, but there is a hierarchy, you see, between um, Gospodin Zwiet and his objects of research, who are again also um, um, orientating him through, through the through space. So um, uh, the career of Jovan Zwiet shows, uh, shows very good the transfer and the appropriation of ethnocentric concepts of society from the Central European context to the society of the Balkans. Jovan Zwiet was, like many, many uh, other geographers of his generation from the Balkans, deeply influenced by the German-speaking tradition of geography personified in Ferdinand von Richthofen in Berlin, uh, Friedrich Ratzel uh, in Leipzig, and Albrecht Penck in Vienna. And besides different fields, fields of research um, uh, of the latter, particularly uh, Friedrich Ratzel, but also Penck uh, represented one particular current of political geography and uh, what came to be called anthropogeography, and particularly Friedrich Ratzel departing from a relation between geographical surface and human population, um, following the zeitgeist linking elements of social Darwinism, understood in this perspective, uh, uh, as social Darwinism understood in this perspective, the state, as we saw it on the Bulgarian maps, um, as a kind of organism growing, changing, expanding. And I will link uh, this link uh, briefly, briefly depict here by um, the elements of bordering ordering uh, by Zwiec. Um, what was particular of Zwiec was uh, his idea of applying the um, um, Völkerpsychologie, the psychology, um, of um, um, nations, peoples uh, of Wilhelm Wundt um, to space. So you see it here. Um, this 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 map is uh, um, structured in psychic types. So um, uh, he created his dynamic type as as a central one. Then we have this central Balkan type, which is um, for him very negatively charged. He is over the, they are, the, this Central Balkan type people are um, have they are they are they are, they are very very um, passive, in, and uh, they are melancholic and they get easily drunk and sing. Then so um, in 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 contrast um, to uh, the dynamic type who is centering in Herzegovina. And this, this type for Zwiec bore, as he said, our most distinctive ethnic characteristic, Nasza najpregnantnia etnička obeležja, which, um, because of the, um, of the high fertility and uh, expansivity, zbog velike plodnosti i ekspansivnosti, had also spread far into the current territory of the Serbian state and beyond. Um, this fact fixation on ethno-psychic uh, characteristics and geographical space established the self-evident nature of identification of ethnos and territory. Or as Philip Ter has put it, um, the ethnization of territory, which then began particularly after the First World War. So we see monochrome maps are, uh, in this certain understandings, no means um, of uh, abstraction uh, 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 or of simplification of societal experience. Uh, 
um, they are the blueprint of a new order. In contrast to the heterogeneity of the social space, maps represent the aim, the concept of the future, clearly demarcated monochrome surfaces. And by this, ethnic maps massively reduce social complexity to a highly constructed dimension of everyday social life, ethnicity. Um, that such visual representations of ethnic affiliation, the territorialization of ethnos, um, that this more than a half a century later and after profound societal changes in the decades in between uh, come up again um, was anything but to be expected in the 1980s. But um, with the rise of Slobodan Milosevic, those protagonists of science and cartography who had been considered old and somewhat dusty until then, suddenly they had a podium. And as you see here, this uh, uh, insert from NIN, Nedeljne Informativne Novine, uh, uh, important weekly from, from Serbia. And as you see it here, Cvić was back in fashion. Uh, as, uh, this was a discussion uh, suddenly emerging in the 1990s um, where someone like Cvić, who was only fam uh, familiar to, 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 to the experts, again entered um, uh, the, the, the media scene. And you see it here, how there begins a discussion of, as, as here, um, the possible borders of the new Yugoslavia or the borders and the Serbian question, Yugoslavia and the Serbian lands. And here you see also some uh, new blueprints of um, a territorial uh, belonging. And, um, and this, the question remains, how could this happen? Um, that such approaches and representations uh, from the 1920s uh, could uh, gain again importance, that people could again murmur about psychic types and uh, now enriched uh, with odd theories about ethnogenetics, uh, as it was also the case. Um, it has to be stated that this did not come from nowhere. Actually, as you of course know, I think um, uh, that uh, also uh, state socialism, particularly in Yugoslavia, with the attempt to surmount ethnic boundaries, uh, conceived democracy at all as equal rights for all ethnic groups. So we had a particular state socialist authoritarian kind of affirmative action uh, in, 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 in Yugoslavia. Uh, so uh, this on the other hand had the effect of the affirm affirmation of ethnicity in Yugoslavia. And um, so the perception of society through ethnicity was completely familiar. Um, so as you see it here on one map from, from uh, which is more uh, absolutely more sophisticated and um, uh, 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 referring to scientific standards of having ethnic maps, nevertheless, it is an ethnic map. Uh, be, uh, an, um, although the most important point is still space is um, regularly conceived in this ethnic partitions. How, how sophisticated ever it, uh, it, uh, it, it is. So, and in this deep uh, political and economic crisis in the 1980s, um, ethno nationalism gained even more power and, and seemed convincing um, to great parts of the Yugoslav society. And uh, what is also important in this context is that um, there was some kind of familiarity with uh, the shape, uh, the, the presence of such kind of um, uh, uh, national borders. I will try shortly to illustrate this by caricatures. Uh, for example, here also uh, from, from Nin, this is just only an illustration for the numerous caricatures uh, which were present everywhere in Yugoslavia in conceiving um, the national, the shape of the nation as, as a symbol, uh, uh, very, very, very uh, familiar. So that I, actually you, you, uh, you uh, uh, see not bubbles, but you see republics um, 
that uh, this shows the familiarity or of Dusan Petricic, um, another variant how how this is present in the public uh, <clears throat> in the public space in the beginning of the nineteen of the nineteen nineties, and um, um, as you see uh, through caricatures, a representation of a complex and heterogeneous society as a figure as a homogeneous organism is uh, um, is also internalized as being something. Um, something um, familiar. And it is act exactly in this period that the ambivalence of such ethnic maps became particularly clear in the wars then uh, for ethnically homogeneous territories in, in Yugoslavia. And they not only had this classical function um, I pointed out in the beginning of internalizing uh, the idea of a homogeneous territory, but also conveying boundaries in general, which until then had been thought by the majority of the society to be something impossible to realize and to convey them as plausible and natural. And um, again, just an example also from, 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 from Neil, um, before the outbreak of, of the wars and uh, in the first phase, uh, the print media were almost flooded by such ethnic maps, as you see here, it's just a kind of, um, yes, also, um, it's, 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 it's a little bit uh, uh, an odd combination of, um, of uh, you see, public relation for Yugo Petrol and Yugo Export, and on the other hand, um, showing the real situation, the, the real ethnic situation. Um, and the obvious absurdity of ethnic segregation was countered by these, um, by the means of this strictly scientific visualization of such separation on maps, which one from school knew as something apparently uh, objective. And maps had has always and still have a high degree, I would call it um, suggestive realism, since we use often maps for our orientation in space. Um, and the producers of ethnic maps who exploit this suggestion of objectivity and reality content, content have profited and continue to profit um, from, from this. And tragically, the ethnic order of Bosnia for example, projected on uh, the maps was then implemented in the wars by means of violence, making ethnicity the, the determining moment in everyday life. And um, it is still today. So to come to an end, um, what is here for me important is that the familiarity of the everyday space was transformed by such maps into alienated ethno-national territory. Before, before it turned into practice, first it was crucial to revert the content of familiarity, not individual experience, beyond boundaries was familiar and authentic, but the belonging to unbounded national collective symbolized in the uh, monochrome colors on the map. Concrete space was turned into a national abstract space which had to be at least realized by violence. Um, violence, of course, remains, remains the decisive factor. <clears throat> but nevertheless, maps anticipate and later approve the new homogeneity, a media of accepting the new reality as something objective. So thank you. Great, thank you very much, Nenad. We're all clapping, you just don't hear us. Um, thanks, that was really great. I think a very interesting oversight of, uh, of all these different layers of utilization of maps and their meaning. And I really like this, you know, going back 
and and showing us what it all meant before and how it's um, how it's used um, up until these days. So I would have a couple of questions, but I guess there are other people which I would like to take their chances here. So I would just open up for a quick discussion if anyone is interested in shooting their questions at Nenad. Can't hear you, Kevin. I'll start. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. That was incredibly interesting for me. Um, uh, especially the part on Jovan CH, very informative. Um, just a quick question, and it kind of relates to uh, the legacy of CH in this case, but not directly, is um, how, how would you uh, discuss how maps are used today in terms of not only being symbolic, but a kind of awareness of this symbolism in uh, like a meta cartography where I believe it was this year that Kosovo was asking Apple to include Kosovo as an independent territory on Apple maps in that the map almost makes it more real than any kind of international recognition. Um, yes, this is, um, thank you. This is a really complex question. Uh, um, uh, because I mean, I'm a historian, I can't, I can't tell so much uh, concerning uh, something researched, I can tell you my impression, my, my uh, uh, dilettant uh, amateur, amateur expression, uh, impression, but I can refer to a, a great colleague of mine, Serjan, Serjan Radovic, uh, he's, he's ethnologist uh, in Belgrade, and Serjan um, um, is, is, is doing research on um, uh, the democratization of, of maps, so that you, what you see actually um, this is very interesting. On the one hand, there is some kind of authority, uh, as you say, with, with uh, Apple or Google, um, where it is very important to have this delimit uh, the, the visualization of this um, um, delimitations. On the other hand, what is also very, very interesting is this development of kind of um, uh, um, hobby uh, map creators in Wikipedia, for example, or in other uh, media. Um, as, you, as you see in Wikipedia, you have a numerous amount of uh, self-created maps who still refer to a kind of, um, yes, uh, um, scientific, scientific uh, uh, context. But nevertheless, what is really interesting is that um, maps, which were for a long time and um, um, for a part also today, are a very affair of the state. So um, only, only they, they, the, 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 the administration was authorized to create maps. Mm. And this is also until today, very interesting that um, the access uh, to maps, to topographical maps is, uh, for example, in Serbia, it is completely limited. As a private person, you, you, cannot, you cannot buy a topographical map. You have to be an institution. Um, and this is very interesting that you have this kind of um, uh, still this, oh, this is something um, we have to hide and it's very important. This is our secret, our knowledge, uh, which is placed uh, on the maps. For, for the, uh, uh, the different situation in Bulgaria, you can buy maps everywhere. And maps are um, present even in Metro. You can, you can buy Bulgarian maps show, showing the great territory. So um, um, on the one hand, it, it is still very, very uh, um, closely linked to state authority. And on the other hand, um, this is really a nice contradiction. What you, what you, what you said is um, this kind of globalization that uh, uh, the authorities in Kosovo don't, do not control the map on Apple, but they, are, um, they, are, they have a relation. They, they, they are dependent on this kind of visualization. Uh, in, a, in a global context, they as a national state want to be visible. And for me, this, what you said was, was really interesting to think about actually, this uh, interrelation between a globalized uh, uh, context and still the reference to national maps and to, to make 
uh, uh, the borders visible. What I like on, on, on this kind of Google Maps or something else is that you can click out the borders and look on, on, on regions without borders. But um, not only the Kosovo administration, I think also different others want, they want, uh, they want uh, to be, to be vis visualized uh, on, 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 on maps, uh, on Apple or wherever else. I, 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 it was just a reflection. I can't, I can't give you an expert insight on, on this, in this question concerning the nowadays situation. I think that was uh, a great way of thinking about it actually. And um, uh, I'm pretty sure that Kosovo is also the only country in the world that has a map of the country on its flag, um, just to oh, keep it going. <laughs> um, um, you should also think of Bosnia, the, 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 the flag of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina and of Cyprus. Um, Hello, Nenad. Hello, Roswita. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I was late because I was lecturing. So please do pardon me for being late. And uh, uh, well, I, I jumped in at the right moment because uh, speaking of uh, uh, flags uh, as, a, as a semiotician, because I'm uh, a semiotician, uh, especially in, in visual culture, uh, we have it, uh, you named uh, these three flags, but you have it uh, on each flag that has some identity issue. Uh, it's, uh, it's incredible how we uh, want uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, um, speak up or uh, come out uh, with the, uh, this uh, uh, specific uh, uh, geographical, uh, physical um, mm, presentation and representation in uh, forms of symbolics. So that's, that's your field, guys, but uh, uh, all, all flags uh, or any country, I know it uh, from experience from, from uh, all uh, ex uh, France, uh, French colonies, same thing in uh, uh, Guinea, in uh, Papua New Guinea, and uh, 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 they call it Outre Mer, Colonie d'Outre Mer. Uh, how tiny those islands are, and then representing themselves on their flags with, of course, their colors, but uh, with, with their uh, geographical. Uh, like uh, representation, that's that's incredible. Uh, it makes uh, 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 it relates uh, uh, physical, uh, geographical um, issue with that uh, uh, symbolic part of uh, representation, either in nationalist or uh, cultural uh, stance. Uh, thank you very, very much for, for, for this insight. I mean, I, 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 on flex, I did not reflect so much until now, but it is also a very interesting topic in, in concerning um, uh, uh, the representation of the Gestalt, if I, if I may say it in German, of, yeah. of, uh, of the nation, of the territory. And what is also interesting, at least it came now, it came now to my mind, is that um, actually this is also um, connected to the European Union, because both uh, the Bosnian, uh, the Bosnian's flag uh, and the Kosovo flag um, are, how to say, I think they are a little bit nudged uh, to, to have uh, this kind of uh, visual representation on, on, on them. And I think this is also interesting in everyday life, for example, in Kosovo or, or, or parts of Macedonia, um, how, how the symbols are applied if they are applied or not applied. I mean, this goes, particularly in the Macedonian case, I mean, I, this is just a reflection on of because this was really inspiring. It, it's, not, it's not based on research, but I, but I found, find very interesting if you see think of this uh, plates of the cars in Macedonia, and they have this um, M car at the, uh, uh, it's the right, no, it's the left side, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, like this EU, EU thing, and um, they have uh, 
sometimes the Greek uh, Greek authorities on the border mm. are um, not so polite and they demand that this MK is a being uh, uh, and that something is being put over it so that they can can uh, travel to Greece and very much people from Macedonia who are going on vac vacancies in, in Greece they <laughs> do it themselves uh, not to see this national sim uh, symbols in so you can every time see in Skopje who was actually in Greece uh, on vacation um, because there, there is this missing you you reminded me of something I don't know if Vani also knows this practice uh, Philip was uh, young too young and others uh, also but uh, uh, during uh, the, the wars in 90s, um, it was the case, uh, uh, the interdict, uh, like uh, interdit, the, the thing that has been forbidden uh, when you uh, moved uh, from one republic to another, back then uh, republics, you also needed to cover your uh, plates. Uh, because, uh, or people, what they did, um, I know because I had family in Serbia, in Croatia, in, in Slovenia, and you needed to 